What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Cesar with Cesar Gets Crypto, and we are talking about Bit Farms and Clean Spark today, CLSK and BITF. We're going to be talking about Bit Farms for Mr. Q Stick himself, and then we'll be talking about Clean Spark for me and for anybody else who wants to be informed about what I think about Clean Spark. Um, we might go over some more things. It depends on how well this video goes or how, how quickly it goes, but knowing me and how much I like to talk, We'll probably stop after Clean Spark, but maybe I'll add uh, like Wolf or uh, BTT, B, BTCM. I don't know, you know, one of one of those, something like that. Um, but without any further ado, let's actually look at this. I think I wonder actually did S Dig today? No, they didn't. Nope, they actually they're looking. But they look, you know, they haven't taken off yet, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, it'd be like buying back here. No, anyways, um, don't don't take that seriously. Bit, Bit Farms, B T B I T F, um, top to bottom here, on the weekly, you're above your six one eight. You you're actually like breaking through your six one eight. We still have a day and sixteen hours left. Let's see if we can actually close above the six one eight. Closing above the golden retracement itself is nice. It's a sign of strength, but. There are plenty of times, plenty of examples where you do close in this range above the 618 and then you still come down, right? And that's not a problem. That's not that's not bad at all. It's very normal actually to do. And that's why I have this line above the 618 at uh, this the 69 level along with the 618 itself. I have that labeled because this this zone I kind of treat the zone itself like I like how most people would would think of the 618 being, right? Um, like this is your resistance zone, not the line specifically. Um, it's it's very normal. So so anyways, without explaining too too much more, um, looking at this here, I would think that you would find some resistance at some point. Maybe come down to your 0.5. Maybe come down to your 382. It's also possible that you could go all the way to your 786. That is possible as well. But coming in line with this area, if we were to put a horizontal magic white line right here. Gotta love those magic white lines, man. Let's see. Um, you know, it's previous area of support back in this range. So finding resistance here on the first attempt, that shouldn't be um, out of the ordinary at all. Um, I wonder to maybe this top to bottom here. 1272 right at the 618. 1414 right there. The 1618 is even a little bit above that 69. I do, I would think at the highest 366, um, you might have found your high here. You might be uh, continuing to kind of like lag, right? A little bit uh, consolidate is the word I was looking for. Um, and then maybe you move higher, but but Bit Farms, you know, it's been very impressive. I got to say, compared to like, and, and Clean Spark itself has been very impressive, but this thing's up 106% this month. We're not even halfway through the month. It's crazy. Lots of volume. Um, with with these kind of moves, man, the, the normal kind of expectations with fibs can absolutely go out the window. I'm talking about this, you know, with, with the reference in mind of like what, what I see on average, like in charts and stuff like that. So, it very well could go to the 786 or the 886. I doubt that you're just going to shoot for new all-time highs and extensions right now. You probably will see some kind of correction like this or like this consolidation right before you move up. Even this right here, you, you, you went all the way up here, but you consolidated really for one, two, three, four, five, six weeks kind of, seven weeks you started to break out. Or maybe this whole area was consolidation. Um, however you want to look at it, you know, maybe just this little bit here, but but you absolutely can consolidate without having a dramatic pullback and then continue to move higher is all I'm trying to say. Um, this is pretty crazy. This this is pretty crazy on the monthly, not gonna lie. So, so I am sticking with my call to uh, find resistance probably in this area at the most at 366 at that golden extension from, from high to low here, right? There's that golden extension. Um, let me see, top to bottom. Um, right there, but if you saw a deep extension at the 1886, that does take you all the way to this 786. You you could see prices above four dollars and sixty one cents at the rate that this thing is growing. By the end of this month, you absolutely could. But but I'm sticking. I'm staying a little bit more grounded. I would say that you probably don't see prices too much above this white line, and you probably do come down form a higher low. Right? You've got your high here, low, higher high, higher low, higher high higher low, maybe you find it at the 382, maybe you find it at the 0.5, um, hard to say, very hard to say because again, not not only is it doing crazy things, but the market cap on this thing um, 
it's uh, 712. That's that's higher. For some reason, I thought it was like 50 million. So, so I'm, I must be thinking of a different one. So that is pretty high. Um, I, I, all the more reason, I guess, to think that it, it might not continue. It's not that high, right? I, I'm pretty sure Warren Buffett said he doesn't touch anything that's under a billion dollars in market cap valuation. That might be up now with inflation, but I'm getting I'm getting carried away here, man. What I'm trying to say is up a little bit more, if not consolidating here and potentially seeing a pullback. If it does pull back, you're sitting at 295 now. It absolutely could. The price of this could absolutely go back to about a dollar thirty, even a little bit below that. You could, you know, I think in the best case scenario, see prices go back. Uh, to 188, somewhere around here, even a little bit above that at these previous areas of resistance, around like two dollars, two dollars and fifteen cents, um, and then continue higher. But uh, I mean, all in all, weekly RSI is strong. It does look good. You are a little bit overbought. You could go, you could go higher. Daily RSI, you did come down and bounce off of your overbought zone, which is very strong. But you also are promoting uh, bearish divergence, and you have decreasing volume as you're moving up. That's not a good combo to have. Um, but watch you just continue to move higher. You know, it absolutely can happen. Um, one hour looks really strong, man. These shorter term time frames look pretty strong, actually. Pretty strong on the two hour and the three hour. You do have a little bit of bearish divergence on a three hour but that's the thing man too with this daily divergence um you could you absolutely could uh continue growing and what's what's what i'm looking for nullify this uh, bearish divergence right you absolutely could if you just keep going higher um there was something else i wanted to say before we moved on let me see right like this okay so back here you came up your move in price, right, like this, that that was not drawn properly at all. But this kind of resembles this, right, in size and, like, shape, trajectory, all that stuff, right? The volume is a lot different. The circumstances right now are a lot different than they were uh, back in the beginning of this year. But you were overbought. You came and bounced off the overbought zone, and then you proceeded to go down, really, like, consolidated, right, along the screen line, and really just consolidated – for like a long time and then you can, then you moved up right and then you moved down whatever um here we are back to this idea of bouncing off the overbought zone you went overbought you're bouncing off it now could we be moving sideways could we be moving sideways here we started in like mid-january and we we've kind of continued to move sideways until i mean really for a long time really till june you know, I don't think that we'd be doing that, but if, if we were, January to June, that's like five months uh, time, right? Mid-January to mid-June, that would be five months time. Um, you know, five months time from now, December, January, February, March, April, May, that'd be a little bit after the halving. So we absolutely could um, continue to move sideways from here if we were to do it like this, or maybe we consolidate for less time and then we continue to move up or something like that, or we move down, whatever. But what I'm, what I'm really trying to say is this is a similar setup as we had here. The price even looks a little bit similar, ignoring the volume, which did increase as you moved up. This is just a lot more volume. Um, you could you could just move sideways from here, right? This might be the top or near the top for the time being, um, and it makes sense too, coming in line with the fact that this overall high to low here, you're at your six one eight six nine area. It it would make sense. The white zone itself is for loading and unloading only, um, and that's why it's labeled as such. But I hope that's not what I was trying to trying to do there. But that's all I got for this. I feel like I, I just went off on this one. So let's let's actually look at uh, CLSK and try to wrap this up. Um, CLSK here up 16.8% today, yesterday, however you want to look at it. You know, for me, it's still today, but, but the previous day. Um, you, you are overbought and you're looking like you're bouncing off your overbought zone as well. But you had a low here this red day, you had a higher low here, you have a low here and a lower low, this is hidden bullish divergence. It is a mark generally of continuation when you're in an uptrend. And if we zoom out, I would say higher lows, higher highs, you are in an uptrend, right? You broke your downtrend a while ago, right? You checked back on this. If we were to draw, I don't know if this is, this is right. Maybe something like that, yeah, right? Resistance, 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 broke, found support, and then boom, something like that kind of. Um, however you want to look at it, though, we broke out of this downtrend. We're in an uptrend now. So hidden bullish divergence, 
does generally mark continuation. Um, if we take this high to low, you staggered around your 1272, looked like you want to break it, but you couldn't. Volume is actually increasing a little bit compared to this day here where you tried to break it. Um, you do have bearish divergence. No, you don't, but, but with a higher daily close, you are going to have bearish divergence presenting itself. So uh, be weary. You know, we might be near the top, and I do think that we are near the top, but that doesn't mean we can't go up. We're at 1025 now. That We could absolutely go up to $14, $15 even. Um, you know, who, who, it could go. We could go up to sixteen dollars, but generally speaking, I'm I'm going to take profits on this probably around uh, twelve fifty to thirteen dollars. That's that's what I'm I'm planning to do, which is right around this golden extension. In fact, a little bit past it. And I've I've gone over that a few times. Why I think that we could go a little bit past it. Um, and right here, like literally right where that line is, that's thirteen dollars and twelve cents. Um, so I, I do think that we could see prices above thirteen dollars, but I probably will be taking profits before that. Um, let me see here. What was it? There was something else. Oh yeah, just the classic, same old, same old, top to bottom here. Uh, the golden retracement is at 1258. The golden extension, which I was just showing here, is at 12, is that right? Is that the right one? Here we go, 1254, 1254, 1258, you know. Um, yeah, so I think it's gonna go pretty overbought, let's see. Higher high though, uh, I don't know. I think you could go higher. I really do think you could go higher. Um, it looks like a bearish two hour, right? Looks like this. This is a bearish two hour. Um, but let's see how bearish it actually is, right? So you had a double top here, and you pulled back to where your divergence started, right there, and then you moved up. Um, you actually had a low here and a lower low in your RSI, but a higher low in your price. Hidden bullish divergence continued to move higher. You've got lower lows throughout this whole thing while maintaining higher lows. It looks like you have bearish divergence, and this is where it can really throw people off. Is whenever you see something like this, you're like, this is bearish divergence. You've got lower highs and you've got higher highs. It's definitely bearish divergence. How could it be anything else but bearish divergence? But you know, this is one drive here, two drives, three drives. So I guess it's one, two, three. This would be the fourth. That could be looked at as triple bearish divergence, and that generally is the maximum. You don't see anything bigger than triple bearish divergence. But, but it also could, if the price continues to go up, it could break this. All it needs to do is get higher than this bit of RS, uh, th these readings in RSI, to negate the the bearish divergence look. Um, and then wouldn't you know it by that time anyways, then it'll turn around. It's going to be like, nope, we don't have bearish divergence anymore, but we're still going to dump here. You know, that's that's something that is very common. So don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in this look. Really, in my opinion, it's actually very bullish. You have a lot of strength in your RSI. You cooled off a lot on your RSI, but you did not cool off a lot in your price. You held this consolidation zone, right? It's a nice little box. You're looking like you want to break that box. And when you break that box, you're probably going to go up to like $13. I, if I had to guess, a little bit above $13. And that is where I'm going to take profits. I'm going to take a little bit of early Christmas money there um, on this thing. Um, selling my options, not not selling the stock itself. The stock is being held all cycle, all cycle. Um, and I, I really think that this thing's got uh, huge potential. You know, I made a video the other day talking about, probably like a month ago actually, talking about how I think this thing can go to $100. Um, here we are sitting at ten dollars twenty five cents now. When I when I mentioned it, I think we were at like five dollars or, or maybe at six dollars. But um, I think we could go. We could see six hundred dollars for this thing by the end of the cycle. If not six hundred dollars, we could see. Let's see, top to bottom here, we could see three hundred and seven dollars. You know, something like that. Like it's it has the the capability and market cap to grow that high. This is crypto. This is a crypto stock. Some of the most volume we've we've ever seen. These guys mine Bitcoin with nuclear power, and this bottom is just beautiful, man. It's like a, a slanted Adam and Eve. Um, it looks really nice. So I do think it'll see new all-time highs. Generally speaking, with new all-time highs, you look for your your minimum extension, which I guess here, top to bottom, would be the 1272. But this is so, you know, this is so forgotten about, in my opinion. This is back in 2018, 2020. We've already had a bull cycle and a bear cycle since then. So maybe taking this more relative fib and I, I do like taking stuff like this because not only is it relative but it's a more conservative target i would rather this thing be measuring expecting to, to take profits or maybe not expecting to take profits 
um, I'm going to take profits not depending on the price, but depending on where we are in the cycle, which means that I'm probably not going to sell until uh, like my stock until 2025, late 2025, because that's when the Bitcoin cycle. So, some people are saying the four year cycle doesn't exist anymore. It's not going to happen. Um, I think they're wrong, man. The, the reason for that is that uh, that things are starting off, they're kicking off quicker and sooner. Things are happening sooner this cycle than they have any other cycle. I don't think that's true either, man. I really don't think that's true at all. Um, they're more tame this cycle, if anything. Um, we've moved up less in a larger amount of time this cycle, if anything. But but uh, I don't know. You know, If anything, if we were to kick things off sooner, that would make me think that this cycle is going to be even stronger personally. But uh, I don't know. You know, I can be wrong. They can be wrong. We can all be right. I don't. I may, maybe not all of us be right, but we we could all be wrong. That's for sure. Um, but regardless of my my fumbling opinions, from top to bottom here, the recent cycle high to the recent cycle low, the minimum extension here would be at a hundred dollars, and then the maximum kind of expected uh, price would be at like three hundred and seven dollars. And you absolutely could go higher than that. So. Um, I think CleanSpark has a bright future in store for this bull cycle. I think it's got a lot going for it, and I think this volume, along with the uh, the very bullish bottoming action, uh, speaks for it all. This is just the beginning. Like if you really look at this right now for what it is, let's let's take this from an overall high to low here again. You are barely, barely above halfway through this range. Okay. It's just the beginning. And I, I don't know if buying here is a good time. You know, again, I am going to take profits right around this, uh, like in this little white zone here. I'm going to take profits in there. Um, but it probably does pull back knowing CleanSpark and how it reacts. It'll probably pull back to prices that are lower than this. If you want to invest in this thing or you want to catch a quick trade, maybe now is a good time to buy. Maybe. I don't know. You know, you are kind of at your, your yearly highs. Um, if you're looking to invest in this thing for the cycle, I might say wait. Just wait. Be patient because I would very much believe that we would be substantially maybe not substantially that might not be the right word but yeah 17% is pretty substantial you know 17% maybe maybe 40% lower than where we are now um, before the having I would think that that does happen right and that's nothing to be concerned with that's really nothing to be concerned with at all because if you're just like kind of maintaining this kind of trajectory here right if you were to pull back and go down to six dollars that's it's still a higher low it's not a problem right so um, anyways I feel like I've gone on long enough I like Clean Spark. I do think it continues to go higher. Um, Bit Farms itself, I think it it might be facing a moment of stagnation. It really could be facing that right now. If not, maybe it goes up a little bit higher. But it is very, very, very hot. Remember, on its uh, on its weekly RSI, it's in fact, or no, it's not. Is it maybe it's it's daily RSI? Yeah, it was its daily RSI. It went all the way up to the 90. It's, so it's been it's been hot without cooling down really at all. But bouncing off this overbought zone is is a strong uh, sign for sure. But if it goes up a little bit more, you could be setting yourself up for some bearish divergence. You might have that now. Um, and even if it does take out that bearish divergence, let's say you're at, you're at about $3 now. Even if it went all the way up to $5, I would expect that the pullback would take you below where the current prices are now even. So that's all I got for you guys. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Um, I love seeing these crypto stocks doing their thing, man. I think I think they're, uh, these are both interesting prospects. BitFarms does have the lower market cap, so that does leave the potential for, for more growth with BitFarms. But uh you know, personally, I like I'm a clean spark guy myself, but I, th I hope they all do well, man. I hope they all do well. And uh, I don't know. We can do a little bonus real, real quick. We can do Wolf. We can look at it real quick, though. OK, because uh, I know a lot of people like Wolf. We're sitting at a dollar sixty three now had a positive day at about 13 percent there. Looking like a nice turn. Look at that, man. You filled the gap. Positive turnaround. Two days left in the week here. Um, decent volume, breaking above the 50. I love it. I, I really do like this a lot. And you kind of, you kind of look like Clean Spark, right? Except you've got an even an atom potentially, where Clean Spark CL, CLSK here had this on the monthly, had this atom and then Eve, right? And and it, it was tilted, right? Where this has got the uh, the, the even atom. I don't know it. Kind of, kind of a bullish look, I suppose. Um, 
not getting into the oversold zone is definitely a bullish look in itself. Rejecting that is nice. Going from low, I've already done this in a previous video, but I'm going to do it again because I forget. Yeah, bouncing off of that 61869 zone is also nice to see right in that white zone there. Um, found a little bit of resistance at your 382, found support on your 0.5, you're probably going higher. I would bet that uh, Terra Wolf here from top to bottom, yeah, I, I mean, I bet, man, I bet you're really on your way, truthfully, to like $6 to $10.30, something like that. Um, probably not by the end of this year, but before the halving, I, I would say so, probably before the halving. Um, and if not before the halving, that's okay. You know, it gives you more of an opportunity to kind of get your, your uh, ducks in a row and try and get this thing at lower prices. Um, hmm. I didn't know it existed all this time, though, right? Very big sell-off, a lot of volume here. I don't know, man. I don't know. This thing could do great. It really could do great. What's its market cap right now? 392. So if it did 100x, that would be a 39 billion dollar market cap. That's absolutely achievable. Sitting at $1.63, a 100x would be at $163. I mean, that's absolutely achievable, I think, in this cycle. Terra Wolf might be, look at all that volume, man. Look at all that. What, what is that? Let's see, actually, on, a, uh, on another note here. That was a lot of volume on that month there, the highest volume, 162.51 million in volume. And, you know, I always thought that that was shares. So you would multiply that number by what the shares price is. But I, th I think that's actually the dollars. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I'm really not 100% sure, but I think that that is. Um, I don't know if it's the shares or the dollar. I used to think it was the shares, but I'm pretty sure it is the dollar now. But anyways, um, regardless, that's a lot of money either way. And being accumulated down here just one month, let alone all these months, um, seeing prices go to your 1272 right there with that 100x level from the current price, it's possible, man. It's absolutely possible. Um, you know, it'd be crazy. It'd be a very crazy looking chart, but these things do happen, man. You came down very fast. Just as whenever you come up really fast without being checked, you can fall really hard. Well, if you come down really fast without being checked, you can you can recover pretty hard. You can absolutely recover pretty hard. So um, that's all I got. If you guys like the video, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And that's all I got. Yeah, bye-bye.